All right. This is Adam. This is Adam from Palin's Brewery. I wanted to bring in some different pellets to give a little bit of an overview of the mead. So these are the meads from um, Steve Moritz, Canadian Sasquatch Brewing. So this is the mead swap, the worldwide mead swap. We've got four meads. We've got David's mead from Wales. We have Grant Baker's all the way up from Stokes Valley. Lamo 22, and of course, Steve's mead. So we're gonna crack through them. Just a rough sort of tasting, and then I'll write some scores later on, and we'll see who comes out on top on the meat challenge, the first worldwide meat challenge. Cheers. 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 It smells like honey. I think it smells, it smells really good. strong. It's like lots of It is 11.3%, so it should be a little bit boozy on the boat. Yeah, it's quite nice, it's got like a nice little burn to it as well on the throat. It sits there quite well, but I think the sweetness for it kind of holds quite well for it. The sound you can hear is hail on the roof from the brewery because it's Winter. fucking cold. It's alright, we'll get rid of the cold soon and we'll be moaning about how fucking hot it is. There's a, slight, there's a slight dryness to it, which I quite like, but it has that nice rounded honey quality to it. It still tastes like honey. Mm -hmm. It's still got that the um the graininess of the honey. Yeah. Like the, the, the bubbly bit that you get on top of that. Mm -hmm. Honey spirit. It's still got that yeah. graininess. Pretty good. And it still smells like honey. All the other meads I've had beforehand have always had the alcohol has been really, really high and it's been really thin. Yeah, I'm really dry, but this is still sweet. It does still have uh, an alcohol notes to it, but it's still got that sweetness there. It's very warming. I can, yeah, I'm warming up pretty quick, though. Yeah. So then you know this bit. Now, have we got another glass so we can let this warm up? Not that we need it warm. I think it's, yeah, I think it's quite nice. It's kind of like a... Adam does the dishes. Adam does the dishes, doesn't he? Fuck off. I do sometimes. It's kind of nice. It's quite, quite sort of... It's, it's really in between, really. It's, it's kind of... You get that dryness, but you also get that sweet, retained honey quality to it. I actually quite like it because I, I've, I've had a quite a few that are just too dry. I think, you know, that's really what you want to kind of be having in a meat. You do, yeah. Should you? Yeah. Want something that's nice and sweet. Yeah. Definitely want something that's nice and sweet because honey's sweet. You want to expect to have that taste. Totally. Next on the lineup, Lamo 22's Buckwheat Mead. I know it's Lamo's because it's got red insulation tape on it. No details, but this is meant to be a blind tasting. Let's see what we can pick out. It smells a bit like uh, meat fill, some of the Vix 44. <laughs> now, of course, Larry did the bucket of mead that I had about this time last year, and it was damn good. <clears throat> we followed it up by his Kool Aid, which was about 18%, I think. Ooh. <sighs> this uh, smells intense. That's carrying. Uh, Not for faint hearted, this is Viking drink. This is. <laughs> Holy! Should have put me beer in the plate. Yeah. Um, you should have a wood cup. Cups, but we should very much good. still with a honey, honey nose, but so you can tell it's actually it's, like a different variety. Yeah, honey. it's, it's like really quite different. Yeah. It's, it's quite. Oh, what is it like? Maybe like a, quite a different kind of honey. Oh, wow. It's kind of got that floral note to it, but it's kind of, yeah, it's really earthy and, you know, oh, it's, yeah. Quite, it's, it almost kind of smells minty, minty fresh, kind of thing. Yeah. 
Do you have you can't clean smell? <laughs> you can't clean smell. It's got a lolly smell. It's got a lolly flavor yeah, to it. Yeah. It's got that, the kids' lolly. There's a kids' lolly that just tastes like this. I wonder if it's a just a wild blend or something like that. Cause it just I need it. There is a yeah. The warmer it's getting, actually, it's kind of just more and more lolly. It's a little sweet. A bit of barnyard sort of. But when you go to the petting farm. Been to a petting farm? <laughs> What's a petting farm for? Maybe we should go to a petting farm. They open <laughs> late at night. That sounds really dodgy. Really you get little stamps on your wrist so you can come in and out, and they're fluorescent so the wife doesn't. Uh huh. Show up on your phone. You get special dollars. You got a wife? I don't have a wife. No, I don't have a wife. Have you, you got, got a wife? No. Hence why we're what sitting here drinking meat. <laughs> <laughs> but can you get. Can you smell a. Is there a. Like a hay kind of like a hay, so it was buckwheat. Yeah, so I, think it's, I think yeah, I think it's like a, like a real floral, like um, grassiness, and you get that kind of barnyard hay kind of quality to it. It's a real blend of a bunch of different things. So I think the buckwheat's probably coming through quite well. That it's definitely lighter in the body than the last one as well. It's mm. like it's a little bit of kind of definitely like not as sweet. It's kind of gone from like minty fresh to sweet candy, and then now it's kind of going into that sort of warm honey kind of smell. Because mm. they're not too cold, they're not at a chill temperature. Mm -hmm. I tried to keep them at the right serving temperature so that we didn't have to do some double takes. Although we had to sort of put them aside to the taste them again as that one. Are oh, we were supposed to save those, were right? That's all right, you have another glass out of that one, yeah, thank you. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're getting getting the more, more honey notes. Than yeah, there's now, yeah. So Interesting. If it's not if it's not chilled, the fact that it's coming up that that big burst and that minty fresh now it's kind of walking down to that. But interesting, really. Yeah. Now the only one that's missing out of the lineup is my one, but you've tasted my one and you've tasted my one before as well. Yeah, it's pretty good. We can't vote on that one. It was a sparkly one. Yeah. Not a natural piece. Next one up is Grant Bakers. Travelled all the way from Stokes Valley. So another big international meet. Huge carbon tax on this one. I reckon. Now Grant started making meads around about the same time that I started making meads, and that was when Zippy the Viking <coughs> showed us how to make meads on YouTube. Zippy, cheers, this is all because of you that we've started making meads. Clear as mine, eh, Larry? Very clear. <laughs> you see, uh, left in the bottom of the ring. The last two. You can't smell honey. Mm. It smells like the meat's at home, mate. It's got um. There's a really interesting thing going on on the, the tongue with this. It's kind of. Disappears and then it coats a little yeah. bit. So yeah. it really fades away really fast and then it's like a. It's almost like a slight thin fizz and then it kind of just dries your tongue out. It's 
slightly kind of aromatic, quite dry. Its original gravity was 117, no, 1117, brewed back in May 2014 and it finished at 1002 on the 20th of June 2014. Holy shit. Yeah. It drinks, it does, it drinks it, quite it does, nicely yeah. for a 15%. I don't, I don't know if I would have picked it for 15%, but that could be due to the, just how dry it is and how it's sort of just no real, I know, maybe perhaps with this blend that there's, there's a lot of residual sweetness to it. Yeah. There's definitely no residual sweetness within there. No. Yeah. So, I kind of feel like it wants to be back to something just a little. Yeah, it could be a little bit sweeter, um, just if anything to give it a little bit of character to it. Yeah. And I am scoring these, I'm writing down notes as we go. <laughs> Mega memory. Fifteen <clears> percent. <throat> oh. <laughs> oh. That is. It's really dry. It's really dry. Yeah, yeah. But for he's walked off. Yep, no. He's on the floor. Aiden, you okay? Right there. Oh, oh, he's throwing up. <laughs> Grant, you did a great job of hiding the ABV in this. This would definitely be a pen dropper. I'm looking at you in particular. <laughs> Got overalls on. <laughs> this one is from David. <laughs> Good old Dave. Good old Dave. Arrived today just on the nick of time because I'd organised to come down here and do the tasting with these fine two gentlemen because they've got a bit of pellets add a little bit of complexity, a little bit more insight into the flavours of the Thanks, man. Very like this one. It is super like, wow. Super clear as well. That is, yeah, really good. So Grant, I've got some of this safe for you. I'll drop you off this bottle so you can score it up as well. Mm, wow, it's like kind of airy. Syrupiness to it, it could almost it can almost be a shot. Yeah, it, it kind of comes across like it was, could be like a 30, 40 percent ABV like drinking a, a straight shot of whiskey or something. How much is it? <laughs> uh, the label was on it, but it melted off. Apparently. Oh right, yeah. In transit. Oh, because of the no, because of the ABV. Oh right, yeah. ABV. Oh, I thought it was ABV. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what a handle it. Yeah. It smells. Like, yeah, it smells like 
is it? Yeah, super fresh, like pear, crisp. Um, but yeah, the that, that, that really boozy. Yeah, really. Yeah, I think yeah, it's pretty much. I think the first two drink quite happily and really get that boozy effect. Mm. It's definitely has a very hot, mm. warming you know, for a taste of drink. Yeah. Just in the pen, it's really. It smells a little bit. Mustard as well. A little bit. Mm. Older linen mustiness. Or maybe it's just because I have pears in my laundry cupboard. <laughs> that, that, that's <laughs> that's, that's, maybe that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. It's a flavor it's association. It's the, it's the pear linen cupboard. It's the pear linen cupboard. Yeah, I like I like the last two in a, in a sense that they're quite dry, but I, like you said, I, they do kind of need to be kind of back I think. I think this is quite nice, but it would almost be quite interesting if you had a couple of it, maybe a bit more complexity or a bit more of a blending of something else. Because it finishes off really sharp, like drinking a tequila shot. Yeah, actually, it's just like boom yeah. and it disappears. It's yeah, like, whoa! And you expect that, that tequila bite, but then there's nothing left. Mm. It does drink like a spirit. Yeah, yeah. Is this distilled meat? Oh my mm. god, it's very light. Very light color. Mm. It's yeah. it's one of those it'll creep up in your kind of thing. I like, think you could. It's very easy to drink. You could probably get through quite a lot of the bottle and be on the floor. Like you were you know, before. <laughs> How you feeling? <Philip? laughs> Cheers, David. Right, we've got some lineups of some that are getting warmer. <clears throat> We'll do those. Shot race. Yeah. And we're all sleeping at the brewery tonight. <laughs> just, to, uh, just to sort of work out which ones, just at the end after tasting all of them, which ones really do stand out after they've warmed up a little bit. Um, but, wow. I haven't tasted many meads. The meads that I have tasted have been a lot of Grant Baker's meads, um, a lot of Larry's meads. Actually, I've tasted quite a few meads. I'm going to stick it. I'm going to start, to, you. I'm wait, start wait. to think. Yep. It was Larry's bucket of mead that he brought to um, SJ's place in York. It was just shockingly addictive. Um, and then Grant started delivering me meads. Paul Finney sent me up some meads as well. I haven't cracked into those. Actually, I got a fridge full of meads. So, um. Hasn't tried them because they're on the meat fridge. Yeah, these do affect your memory just as slightly. <laughs> so, we've got a lineup of each of the meads. And we're just going to have a quick shot of each of them. Well, not a shot. I'm going to do shots, are we? You got any salt? Oh, some, yeah. some <laughs> we're just going to do it. A quick tasting of, of each of them, um, possibly in a different order or in a just a random sort of order, just so that we're not comparing or mingling flavours. Let's try and work out which ones got most you know, preference over the three of us, three each, three drinkers. We should be able to come up with a winner. I'm confident. Did you remember that order, Adam? Uh, yep. Was that because I can? Well, no, I got it wrong. I got it wrong. I got it wrong. Okay. Wait, what are we doing? Just having a taste and just sort of putting the one up the front that you think is the best. We're ranking them on our imaginary scale on the billboard. Out of, out of imaginary? Out of imaginary. Same order that we got served, you know? Elephant Same. to one. Elephant to one. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So you got elephant to one? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Are you going elephant to one or, or elephant to one that way? No, no, so um, it's. No, that's yeah. not right. That's not right. Hang on, I'm sorry. It's, it's the, I quite like the pear and the buckwheat. The pear and the buckwheat. And that's. I, like I quite like the pear. I don't, I don't really know why, but it's just. I think it's just because it's a similar flavour and kind of too hot. Okay. We've got, a, we've got a clear second placer. Insulation tape, just from this tasting, obviously we'll have some better notes to sort of come up, but so remember what we talked about because it's all on film. Yeah. See, I can look back and I can write notes specifically about it. Yeah, you're good at this. Easier. You should make more videos. And it should, should I, should definitely make some more videos. And it's pretty close between David and Steve, actually, it's David over oh, Steve. Um, I think Steve's is just a little bit sweet, but that pear one is really, it's, it's like drinking spirit. It's just yeah. like being a spirit, a spirit back. But Steve's tastes like what a mead is meant to really taste like. From, from um, my perception of what a mead should taste like. You should be able to smell the honey, you should be able to taste yeah. the honey. Yeah. You should definitely be able to smell the honey. The few that I've, I've made, strong and honey character and I think you know, that's really you know, anything you read on the internet or any, any kind of guidelines to, to you know, making a mead, you kind of want to have that as quite a prominent character really if you're going to make the yes, honey yes, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's why I work on the tea one now, the tea one through the because I don't need to get the honey in this one. Mm. It's just like this beer and it's a good I don't know, yeah. I don't know what it is really, I, I think it's just that, that single flavour of that, of, of a, that fruitiness coming through that kind of makes it quite interesting. You know, it is a really it big and kind of, I guess, boozy drink, but at the same time, it's kind of interesting and kind of a bit more of a fun take on so the style. So technically, we're sort of hitting for Steve. Yeah. Steve and Larry. But then for enjoyability or interest, you yeah. go, oh shit, that's a lot different than what I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. and if we're talking about a single honey only and fermentation, Question around how we get some peer flavor. Yeah, how much peer flavor do we get into that? Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Okay. Those bees have been doing some funky shit. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, I wonder where they've been hanging out. Beer tree. <laughs> so, what's the chances of Balin's doing a mead? No, I'd quite like to do one. I don't know how well yep. they go down to a. <laughs> well, a lot of bars for them. Road to the mead? Road to the bracket? Did, didn't they? Yeah, I need a pretty massive tank. I think I've got some. <laughs> <laughs> Shipload of honey and a lot of time. Just mm. chucking an oak barrel. Could do. Could be a bit of fun. Could be a, a one off. Yeah. Lightly carbonated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chucking in some kegs. Whoa, a keg of meat. I'm just saying. $45 a bottle. Well, I don't know. It's going to be quite interesting having a pub. Meet on tap. Meet on tap. Cheers, Steve, for organising this. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, we had five meads in the worldwide mead competition because mead is just an emerging thing. I think the Vikings did it back in. Remember the Vikings were in a long time ago? Yeah, but they didn't have video. So, hey, that's why they missed the boat on this one. Um, next year. I'm sure there's going to be more people that want to put some meads in. I've already had a couple of people say, hey, I've got a mead and I'd love to send it over to you and we'll do a mead swap. So possibly we're going to have a few more meads sort of floating around and we're going to do some tastings. But cheers Steve, cheers Grant, cheers Larry and cheers David for getting these meads to me, especially you Grant, because of you coming all the way from Stokes Valley. I know it's pretty rough when you get out of Petone. Um, so thanks for bringing it down. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> but cheers. Let's have another one.